Greetings, my brothers and sisters. It's just another day that the Lord has kept me, kept me from all evil and kept my mind stayed on him. There's a lot still going on in the world around us concerning COVID-19 and this epidemic. The virus is causing us to get out of our comfort zone. But here's another opportunity for us to share the word of God with you beyond the walls of the church. I want to thank all of you for supporting ministry, supporting your pastor, your preachers, your ministers, and supporting the church in this time. But let me share this word with you. Our scripture comes from the Old Testament, the book of Nehemiah, chapter number one, verses three through six. Again, Old Testament, Nehemiah chapter number one, verses three through six. Again, verse number three, you'll find these words penned. And they said unto me, the remnants that are left of captivity there in the providence are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Verse 4, And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Verse 5, And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Verse 6, let thy ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of, of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. My brothers and sisters, when I think of these few verses, I want to use as the world circumstances continues to evolve around us, I would like to use for a subject, being heartbroken. Again, being heartbroken. Verse number four reads, It came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Again, Nehemiah says, I am heart broken. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we ask you to bless this word. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, being heartbroken. My brothers and sisters, when we consider the book of Nehemiah, it is one of the 12 historical books. When we consider the prophet Nehemiah, our writer and our orchestrator, we must understand that God is still in the business of working through his people to accomplish seemingly impossible tasks. God often shapes people with personality, characteristics, experiences, and training that prepares them for his purpose. And usually the people have no idea what God has in store for them. God prepared and positioned Nehemiah to accomplish one of the Bible impossible tasks. Nehemiah's credentials was a common man in a unique position. He was secure and successful as a cupbearer to the Persian king. As a cupbearer, Nehemiah held a position of great responsibility. His role of tasting the king's wine to prevent him from being poisoned placed Nehemiah in a position of trust and confidence and confidence as one of the king's advisors. Nehemiah had little power but had great influence. He was trusted by the king. He was a dedicated layman who had the right priorities and was concerned for God's work who was able to encourage and rebuke at the right time, who was also strong in prayer, who gave all glory and honor and credit to God. He was also a man of God, 
concerned about the fate of Jerusalem. The truth is many people in this day and age are only concerned about themselves. They're only concerned about a position. They're only concerned about what they can receive from serving the Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we consider this text, as we consider Nehemiah focus and we consider his heartbreak, the question you have to ask yourself, have you ever experienced something in your life that upset you? Many of you can say, when we consider the world situation concerning COVID-19 and the epidemic, many can say with surety that our hearts are broken and, and our lives are being affected daily because of the policy established by many government leaders of social distancing. Our hearts are broken because the struggle is real. Those who have sick loved ones can't even go to the hospital to visit, to encourage them and inspire them. And even those who have lost a loved one can't even have a proper burial surrounded by family and friends. And then we have the devout believers that desire to attend church for corporate worship and being told they cannot uh, gather for corporate worship. My brothers and sisters, the country is dying to get back on track, dying to get back to normal. But like Nehemiah, we must enter into a posture of prayer. We must enter into a posture of fasting that God will revive us again. The psalmist in Psalm 85, 5 and 6 said, Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thy anger to all generation? Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? My brothers and sisters, many of us are ready to get back on track. Many of us are ready to get back to normal. But I believe Nehemiah has a word for us to encourage us that first of all, we must pray. We must seek God. We must ask him for his mercy and his forgiveness. And then we must repent of our sins. Typically, we see our roadblocks as negative. We see this world situation as negative, which you often are. But we should use our time wisely. We should use this time to commune with God. We should use this time to read our Bibles. We should use this time to study the Word. We should use this time to medicate, meditate on the Word and stay in tune with God. And then the season we're in will not be uninterrupted. But the new season that God will bring about because of His mercy, He will bring us into it and we'll be able to be fruitful and multiply. A quick survey of history, my brothers and sisters, show that men who have affected the world most positive have all been moved to action by some grave need. In other words, something broke their heart. In our scripture, Nehemiah is just one example. There's many examples in the world where somebody had a broken heart and they went into action to help somebody. Those, those doctors and those nurses and those medical leaders and, and those custodians, they all are moving forward to ensure that the people have a chance at life. Yes, they're heartbroken, but yet they're still trusting God. Now, here it is in our scriptures, my brothers and sisters. Nehemiah hears some bad news. When he heard the bad news about the destruction of his hometown, his heart broke. And it led him to return to his hometown and work toward a restoration. He surveyed the problem and he got an understanding of what needed to be done in your neighborhood and around your community. Have you surveyed what you can do? Have you surveyed, surveyed how you can uh, be hospitable? Have you seen what work needed to be done? Nehemiah gathered the people to help restore the broken walls and the structure. He persevered through challenges when people mocked his effort. All this happened because his heart broke when he heard some bad news. I don't know about you, but every time I hear some bad news, I always want to go down on my knees and pray. 
and ask for God's mercy and ask that his will be done. And anytime you pray that his will be done, he will always work things out for our favor according to his will. But the Bible, the Bible, my brothers and sisters, the Bible speaks a lot about being heartbroken. David in Psalm 34 and 18 said, The Lord is nigh unto them that are a broken heart, and save such be of a contrite spirit. Do you feel as though your recent heartbreaks, losing your job, being sick, losing a family member, is crushing your spirit? Can I tell you, God is closer to you than you realize. He can save you from despair as you face your broken heart. The scripture said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalm 147 and 3 said, he heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wound. In other words, my brothers and sisters, the psalmist is saying God cares for each of us. And he knows what's unique ways our heart has been wounded by a painful experience. He knows just as a physician treats each patient differently according to their need, God knows how to help you heal a broken heart. He knows exactly what you need, and all you have to do is surrender your life to him. Go to him in prayer and ask God to heal your brokenness. And can I tell you, he will. He'll do it. And then Isaiah 61 and one said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty of the captive and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. This prophecy from Isaiah was fulfilled in Jesus when he read it in the temple during his ministry. Though he healed many of their physical wounds and diseases to, discriminate, to demonstrate his power, his main concern, my brothers and sisters, was the spiritual healing for all of the beloved creation, for all his creation. He offered us spiritual healing from the darkness that the evil one wants to give us. Then in Psalm 51 and 17, the psalmist said, the sacrifices of, the, of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart of God thou will not despise. This was one of David's prayers while he repented from grievous sins of adultery and murder. Whether or not you share any responsibility in the situation that broke your heart, you can know that no pain is too great for God to heal. And no situation is too terrible for him to overcome. My brothers and sisters, whatever you're going through, whatever we uh, have done and whatever broke our heart, God is able to restore and repair all that is broken. And then when we look at the New Testament, Romans 10, 1 and 3, Paul said, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. My brothers and sisters, Paul was heartbroken and he wanted the very best for those who he was leading. And when others around us don't see what we see, we need to continue to tell them that Jesus is able, that he's able to heal their brokenness. He's able to forgive their sin. He's able to restore unto them the joy of their salvation. And then Nehemiah prays to God. Nehemiah is shocked by the news. He broken down and cried for many days. Have you ever lost a loved ones and you seem like the pain won't go away and you year after year, the same pain keeps going, coming back and you keep crying. But Nehemiah broke down and cried for many days. But not only did he break down, 
But it says he went into a fast and prayed to God. During his prayer in Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah called on God to hear him in his intercession for the Israelites. He admitted that they have been unfaithful and incorrupt. He also said that along with himself, everyone in his father's household had also been disobedient and sinful. What Nehemiah is teaching us, sometimes we just need to repent. Ask God for forgiveness. Ask for God's mercy upon our household, upon this land, everybody we come in contact with. With, we have to have intercessory prayer for everywhere. This is why Jesus said, watch, fight, and pray. And then we are to pray without ceasing because God is still able. And then we see Nehemiah's confession. Nehemiah confessed that neither he nor his Israelites had kept God's commands. He knew that God told the Israelites that if they grew unfaithful and disobedient, he will scatter them so much like the shaft. However, Nehemiah also reminded God that he promised to hold his people near and to bring them to a place where they had chosen if they kept his commandment. Nehemiah then begged God for mercy upon him and the Israelite despite their corruption and time of faithlessness. So what gets close to breaking your heart right now? My brothers and sisters, we see Nehemiah was heartbroken because the people was not right. They had sinned against God. They was unfaithful into God's ways, and God has given us his word on what we are to follow. But the question is, what gets so close to breaking your heart right now? Is it a family member or family you know that is in need? Is it your neighborhood, children? Who needs a male role model or male influence? Is it for the people who need to know God's loving kindness? When you're able to answer these questions, my brothers and sisters, you may, like Nehemiah, move into action or to have compassion on others. But my brothers and sisters, what Nehemiah teaches us in this moment, that even in our heartbreak, there's some things we must be able to see. So allow me to share these quick three points with you. Get an understanding that even in heartbreak, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the road. Even though you heartbreak, doesn't mean that it's over. Sometimes it's just the beginning. And here it is, point number one, Nehemiah says, in your heartbreak, you got to see your purpose. <clears throat> Being God's leader is not just gaining recognition, holding a position, or being the boss. Nehemiah says, holding God's position means planning, hard work, courage, and perseverance. He says, positive expectations are never a substitute for doing difficult work. And in order to lead others, Nehemiah said, you need to listen to God's direction, even in your own life. Because God is always speaking, but are you always listening? Sometimes we have to be still and understand what God is trying to tell us in this, sec in this season. Maybe he got something great for you to do, but you need to listen and see the salvation of God. The second thing we see, according to Nehemiah, is we see the persistence. The persistence. When difficulties come, and surely they will come, then there's a tendency for conflict and discouragement to set in. We must recognize that there is no triumph without trouble. There's no test without a testimony. There's no message without the mess. There is no victory without becoming a victim. When problems arise, we must face them squarely and press on to complete God's work. Although Nehemiah was heartbroken, faced all kinds of slander and threats, but that did not stop him from finishing what he started. My brothers and sisters, if God had placed a word on the inside of you, you need to get up and finish what you started. It's not time to throw in the towel. 
It's not time to give up. It's time to press on a little bit longer to see what the end is going to be. Our third point Nehemiah teaches us in this study, my brothers and sisters, is Nehemiah says, be prayerful. He said, be prayerful. From the beginning to end, Nehemiah prayed for God's help. He never hesitated to ask God to remember him. Prayer is still God's mighty force in solving problems today. Through prayer, God guides our preparation, our teamwork, and diligent effort to carry out his will. What if we would all get down on our knees and pray on one accord? Oh, what a time. I believe we will move the hand of God to work out the details that he will have us to do. My brothers and sisters, the elements of effective prayer consists of praise. You got to get a praise your way through the trouble. Thanksgiving, even when you don't need anything, you need to tell the Lord, thank you. Repentance, we got to repent of our sins and ask God for his mercy. And then if there is any specific request, we need to ask God to do it. And then prayer is always about commitment. Committing our will to him. My brothers and sisters, prayer is always in order to move the hand of God. So as we go through these, my brothers and sisters, as we conclude this message, you may not have unique Nehemiah's unique ability as being a cup barrier associated with the king, or you may feel that you are not in a position to do anything great for God. But I believe there's two ways we all can be useful to God. First of all, be a person who talks to God on a daily basis, morning, noon, and night. Welcome him into your thoughts and share yourself with him, your concern, your feeling, and your dream. And then the second thing is be a person who walks with God. Put what you learn from his word into action. Be a hearer and a doer of his word. God may not, God may have impossible missions that he wants you to do through you. God knows your heart. He knows what needs healing. He knows you're isolated. He knows you're going through the storm. He knows the painful experience, especially because of the heart, heart breaks of losing a loved one, like death, sickness, or even somebody in close relationship. But the important things to remember, my brothers and sisters, is remember that God is close to you. Even when it doesn't feel like it, seem like the world is caving in around you, feel like you're in a pit of despair. Remember, reach out and God will lift you up. You can do it through prayer. You can read it through reading the scripture. You can do it through spending time in worship. My brothers and sisters, we all may get heartbroken, but that don't mean God ain't, doesn't have anything for us to do. Because the truth is, he has a plan and purpose for each of us. Because once we have been through the test, we have a testimony, a testimony to tell somebody else what God has done for us. And not only that, once we've been through the mess, he gives us a message to share with us so somebody else can be like David in Psalm 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. See, if you don't never invite anybody to taste, then they won't come to the table. But we, when we invite somebody to taste, we have to tell them our testimony. We have to tell them about the mess we went through. But then we have the good news and tell them that the victory that Jesus, when he got up out of the grave, he claimed the victory. He claimed that he had all power in his hands. And my brothers and sisters, we don't have to have heartbreak. We don't have to live with it. We don't have to, my brothers and sisters, put our head between our legs. We don't. All we have to do, my brothers and sisters, is look up toward heaven and know that all of our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And he promised to revive us and redeem us and restore us and replenishes us. And all we have to do is believe in his word. May this word bless you. If you're heartbroken, go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to show you the way. And he will show you the way. 
Thank you again for listening. Share this word with somebody else as we end in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for all of those who are heartbroken. All around the world, all around the world, Father God, I pray for those. I pray for those who are sick and shut in. I pray for those who are in the hospital. I pray for those who are behind prison walls. I pray for those who are on the front line, Father God, who are dealing with COVID-19 patients. I pray for family who lost a loved one. I pray for those who family who have sick, Father God. I pray for healing right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over everything, Father God, that we have been entrusted, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus over sickness and pain, Father God, and even death. Heal our brokenness right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do say this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things that he has done. He is worthy to be praised. Be blessed until the next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.